screen onto this crowd and see a bunch of CW Championship Wrestling from Florida old school fans. <laughs> Over 30 years ago, I was one of those fans. I was the one that came to watch the very legends that you guys are getting the privilege to see this weekend. That's awesome. Uh, what got me into being a professional wrestler was Championship Wrestling from Florida. I had a bunch. In fact, when my father was a wrestler when I was very young, had a big influence on me. Watching Championship Wrestling from Florida had a huge influence on me. And I, when I seen someone who was in attendance here tonight by the name of Bob Cook, Larger to life, larger than life to me as a teenager. I used to watch Bad Bob Cook on CWF every week. He, he put a huge, huge impression on me. And if Bob can hear me, Bob Cook, can you come out here and say hello to your fans? Bob. Start. You know, when I started training with Malenko, the first thing he told 
told me, you got to get a pair of wrestling boots. I couldn't wait to get a pair of wrestling boots. I used to wear them around the house. I was training to be a pro wrestler. Is it shocking that I couldn't wait to get my first pair of wrestling boots, which I still have, by the way. I still wear them as well. We won't go into that. But we don't have the, it should be training. You should, Look, I'm starting to stutter. You guys getting me upset. I see so many people in the rest of this, and it's not just here, but everywhere, that don't respect the tradition. You're not even wrestling today, and you're wearing your wrestling boots. Are those the boots you wore when Vader broke your nose? No, those are the second pair. I wore those boots out. Vader did break my nose, by the way. Sorry. That's okay. I remember you said the rest of you were kind of worried, and I said, should we contact your next of kin before you work better? And his big fat ass came in the dressing room and he said, don't worry, kid, I'll take care of you. He went in the ring, broke his nose in two seconds, came back to the dressing room, he's laying on the ground, blood all over you, you be okay, good man, and he walked away. That's what Van Vader was. I'm not going to get into Van Vader. But I didn't walk away. I came back, came back more and more and more, and we rose to the top in WCW. The guys today would love to be in the positions that Bob Cook and myself. That's were right. You know, they, they might go ahead and say Bob Cook was a jobber, Rick was a jobber, but I'll tell you what the true term is. We were professional wrestlers. You don't have to win every week to say you're not you're a professional wrestler. I was trained by the greatest professional wrestler to be a professional wrestler. I wore professional wrestling gear from KA Square. I wore professional wrestling boots from BA. Boots. But we were trained to be pro wrestlers. Don't call Bob Cook or Rick a jobber. Call us professional wrestlers. That was what we were and what we'll be to the day we die. Man, that's right. Bob. Not enhancement talent, not jobbers. Professional wrestlers. Poor Richie, there is a huge fundraiser for the 911 Memorial. There is a Stampede Battle Royal match, Bob. Do you think you have one more in you? Would you like to join the gentlemen, Rick Thames, one half of the baddest tag team of the 90s, the Southern Posse? Yeah. Team up, you and I, and come show these young sports what it's all about, Bob. One last one. One last time. One last There it is, ladies and gentlemen, you got it. How about you?
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the WWE Training Center. Donnie Harris Jr. alongside Big Slohan and Vic, set for eight-man tag action here tonight. Say we are, we are set for a major, major show tonight here. Proving ground again from the WWN Training Center. Like you said, Donnie, we're starting things out with a pretty exciting matchup here, an eight-man tag team match. As we see right now, team number one. I knew he would do that. Fashion personified here, Donnie. Normally, uh, over the past several weeks on Proving Ground, RB Unique would be coming in with one gentleman mask and one unmask. Tonight, no mask. We're going mask to mask. Well, whether you have a mask or not, they are up against an amazing, powerful team about to make their entrance way right here, right now. I get a little worried when that music's playing, you know. A more diverse team you will never see. Boo the Gator King, the heaviest. Damian Gemini, probably the lightest. And Little J, the shortest. The bell hasn't even run. And the other team just attacking, the, attacking those guys from behind. It is complete mayhem here, Vic. Smart move by these gentlemen right there, going right after what has to be the most unkempt team I've ever possibly ever seen. You got a Gator King, you got two dogs, you got a little legend. In fact, right now, him and DOM fighting it out in the corner. We got action all over the place. Look at that awesome hat that Hans Kemper is wearing tonight. Isn't that stylish, Donnie? Uh, maybe about three decades ago. I uh, good two and a half, you know. Here, here are those rad skater movies I used to love when back in the late 80s. And right now it's Gemini who's on the receiving end. Hans Kemper with the scoop slam, going for the pinfall, but no. Kick out at two. Getting Gemini back up to his feet. The DOM tagged in. And now, just working on the back of Gemini, working on the head now. Very smart by the DOM. Keep the opponent in your side of the ring. Make sure he's good and far away from his teammates. Can't tag any of them in. Well, that's the thing about the DOM. He's normally not accustomed to tag matches. He doesn't like them. That's why he got in that feud with Alpha K9. But I think he's got some good partners in his crew tonight. As you can see right now, almost a pinfall by RB Unique. As they are, as they're saying, Donnie, they're keeping Gemini isolated in his corner. Another tag in now. Both men working on Gemini. About the only thing holding Gemini up is that top rope there that he's clutching. Clutching the stomach now. Damage been done in the bread basket. Oh, top head on the turnbuckle. Another strike. Wait, Gemini trying to fight back. Uh, that's the thing about this Puerto Rican hound dog. He will hunt and he will fight to get to that corner. Vicious elbow. Oh, just left Respond. himself open. Responded with a vicious lariat of his own. Tagging back in the DOM now. You know, Gemini's ponder stomping the feet. They want him to get back up there. They want him to get into the safety zone and tag one of the men. But right now, that is wishful thinking. DOM just doing everything he can to keep Gemini in that corner. Absolutely. Right now, the CEO of the haters in control. It's a tag that my, really, I can say a best friend of mine from Chile because I don't know many people in Chile. So I'll consider him a best friend from there. Oh, nice fisherman suplex. Went for the three, went for the pinball three count. Gemini was able to kick out. What is keeping Gemini in this match, Donnie? I don't know. The will to win. Gemini, you may remember at the last show, won that six-way battle royal matchup. So we know he's got plenty of fight in him, but right now, the DOM and Hans Kemper are doing everything they can to get it out of him. Oh, absolutely. Right now, they're taking him down. He's still fighting back, though. I think in a match like this, though, he's seen 
seems a lot more action a lot more action in the fray. He was able to get to a corner, perhaps hide out here. He's not even tagged out yet. DOM has him. Oh, oh, that that should be it right there. That might be it. DOM just throwing him around like dirty laundry, hooking the leg. No, Damian Jim and I still in this. Slapping the mat, trying to get that adrenaline going. DOM with the tag now. No, tag the other end. I think I just saw a triple tag or something. They still got control of Gemini. Whips him in there. Eats both of those elbows. You don't know where these guys are coming from. That's why they get that name RB Unique. They're definitely unorthodox. Oh! Might be unorthodox, but their methods are effective whether or not you agree with them. Absolutely effective. Goes for Goes with a tag on Hans Kiefer, and now these guys have been training out a lot in the gyms, been tagging together more and more in the matches. And this could be it right here, Donnie. No! Hans had him up, but no! Damien's able to escape! Beautiful kick from, from Damien! Now is the time! He needs to go over to the other side! He needs to tag in Little J, Boom the Gator King, or even Alpha T! All three of them right now are just on fire! What he goes to the gap! And Little J is in this! The smallest man of his team! But it's not the size of the fight! Or it's not the size of the dog, the fight, size of the fight, the dog! Right now, Little J going to work on Hans! We got pure madness in here right now! The referee's just like, you know what? I'm just gonna let this go and see who comes out on top! And right now, it seems to be J, Boone, K9, and, and Gemini! Let's see there, Donnie! And just throwing all four men colliding like asteroids in space. Not sure who the legal man is at this point on their side. Picking little J up like a battering ram. What are they going to do? Oh, throwing him right into the DOM. The DOM goes down. Oh, connects again with that vicious hard head. Connects for a third time. And for a fourth time. Oh! And over Hans goes. Schoolboy chip on that. Thinking, oh, they just launched him like a bomb. Hooks the leg. And he gets it. And in our opening contest. All four men probably never tag team together. Probably never been in a team of any time together. But they were in the odds put aside their very diverse differences. And they are victorious here in the opening match.
because they don't get them. There are plenty more to come from those two. We need to have a match to try to finish this up once and for all between Nick Kionis and the German Madman Krieger. now here at the training center and who do we have coming out first cohesion on this team, Donnie. Week by week, minute by minute, they just keep getting better and better and even and then better. Well, Vic, you know you say that they're even better, better together. That's the name that they like to go by. But according to my notes, haven't worked out all the kinks. And the, you'll know last week, lost to the crazy bastards. No, 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 no. There was some, there was some trepidation in that match. It was a little madness. In fact, I was a little mad myself. McCoy tag teaming, I think, for uh, the first time here in the here in the training center. You know, Dan Lydon has a lot of history, has a lot of experience in tag team action. Won that six man match last show against the Eighth Day. Now just tradition, not back to traditional tag team. Uh, that little stuffed animal whispering some strategies that, to him. I that think. is Gunther. That is their manager. Well, actually, he's technically Dan Lydon's manager. He might just be giving Buzz McCoy some good advice. Or, or maybe told a joke, I'm not sure, but Gunther is in there giving out advice for this team. I'm not sure if it's gonna help. Andrew Mitchell gonna start it off with even better, better together. Off against Buzzsaw McCoy. See, that was the right call right there. I would definitely get Gunther checked out for any type of weapons or any chicanery that could be going on there. See, this is why I love even better, better together. And the bell is rung and here we go. Both men circling in the ring. Whoa. Andrew, oh, what? Bop, 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 bop. Everybody. Wanted, Andrew wanted to take a moment there to do a little bit of uh, celebrating. Don't think you need to be doing that during the match. Oh, that's some vintage better, better together. Or vintage better together, but it's not as even better as even better, better together. McCoy wanting a test of strength, it would seem. Do a little tease there to Andrew. Oh. Oh. See, that's a mockery. That's, oh, that's what you get for being a mockery. Andrew Mitchell, the first one to draw the strikes in. Up against the ropes. Third into the other side. McCoy responds with a beautiful area. Picking the Cowboy Kid out now. Throwing him against the ropes. Up and over Andrew Mitchell goes, and he feels the sting of the mat onto his back. Misses with that. Picking him up. Beautiful backdrop from Buzzsaw McCoy. Going to try to end it right here. No. Only two. A lot of quick maneuvers by McCoy, and right now New Ori's in a lot of pain. And here comes the psycho one, Dan, Dan Lydon. Eating that vicious elbow from Dan Lydon. Oh, eating it again to the back of the head. Andrew Mitchell on his knees, just staggering around. See, Reverse Ori. Irish whip. Oh! Here we go. Is that Zakara is finding the back of Dan Lydon. Going to try to get a pinfall. No, Dan able to kick out. It's that cohesion I'm telling you about, even better together. Those elbows, and I can't wait to get to see this guy coming in the ring here. Zakairis, he's amazing. Dropping those elbows onto the body of Dan Lighting, gonna try to pin him here, but no. 
Buster McCoy saving his partner. Andrew telling him to get out of the ring. Picking Dan Lighting back up. Very smart by Andrew, getting him into their side of the corner. Tagging in Zakir Zakiris. Zakiris now just working on the bread basket there. Beautiful European uppercut. A, a pure, authentic, beautiful European uppercut right there. I just, I'm more and more amazed by this, by this person's style every week. Just, they say now. slightly improved. This is even better. <laughs> How can you even approve of something like that? Using the rope to choke the life out of a man. I'm just, you know, you're just using the oxygen against the guy's uh, momentum. Yeah, that's it. Whatever you say. Piggy Dan let him up. Fish a suplex from Zach. Gonna try to pin him right here. Well, he had that leg hooked. I thought it was a three count, but it was pretty close there. Dan Lydon now trying to get back to his feet. Looks like he wants to get a tag back to New Ori. Good job. Now they're the ones keeping Lydon outside the ring. McCoy right now having a big conference with Gunther. Well, I hope Gunther's giving him something good to use in this matchup because right now it's it's per personally in the favor of even better together. Able to kick out there. Only a two count. And now Andrew Mitchell turning on Buster McCoy, the man on the outside. Gave Dan Light, Dan Light in a moment's respite there. You know, I know there are two men out there in Israel right now that are watching this with a lot of, well, I hate to say it, but jealousy, perhaps envy, that even better, better together is doing even better than would have even be hoped to be thought here in WWE Improving Ground. Zakaris using that significant wait a minute. Nobody home that time. Went to the way I want too many times, it would seem. What I was saying, that, that significant weight advantage of Zakaris missed that lighting, but it didn't miss the mat. Got the wind out of it. Zakaris will go for that tag. We got multiple tags. And wait a minute, Gunther just ended it. No! That's a disqualification. That's a referee, di referee not counting it. Gunther blatantly interferes, and now even better together is in a lot of trouble. Andrew Mitchell now, grabbed by both men, thrown into the roof. Up and up he goes, and down into the mat. Now what are these two lunatics that thinking? No, oh, what a beautiful double clothesline. Finds both members of Buzzsaw McCoy and Dan Lydon. Zakaira is trying to do, get something going here with Buzzsaw. Picking him up, slamming him down onto the mat. I love it, it was artistry and viciousness. Oh, vicious super kick from Dan Lydon. Zinsack staggering outside the ring. Andrew Mitchell's all by himself. He's on the top row. Dan saying, uh-uh, none of that, not today. And still Gunther is in that ring. Well past the five second mark, you're allowed to be in a ring. Look what these guys are doing now. They set up a two-on-one situation. Going to work on, on New Ori here. Holy shit! Holy shit! Trying to go for a double suplex. Are they gonna, and if they connect! Oh, once again, as I said earlier, the sting of the mat finds the back of Andrew Mitchell in there all alone. Zakiris on the outside. And McCoy and Dan uh, going for something else here, it would seem. Both of them going to the high rent district. They broke a new Ori in half. I can't believe it. And now they're not done. Oh, my goodness. Both men fly high up. Both men connect. McCoy with the pinfall attempt. And he gets it. I can't believe the referee letting Gunther just blatantly interfere in that match. You know it turned the tide, Donnie. I don't think Gunther had little of anything to do with it. It was the good tandem. It was the well-oiled machine, quote unquote, of Buzz Saw McCoy and Dan Lydon. And you know, earlier this, you were saying that you know, that even better and better together has been working as a team. So if you ask me, they still have a few kinks to get out. Currently at my count, 0-2 here at the WWE Training Center. But Dan Lydon and Buzzsaw McCoy moving up the ladder here. And who knows, maybe soon could be in line for a title shot. Those titles currently being held by our new tag team champion, Benji Neptune and Tito Torres, who later in the night will defend them for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, your host of the Richie's Way, your reigning WWE 
So I understand maybe you've got an issue with it. Yeah, it's an issue. issue. Look, we got some solid people, and you know Cahagas. You've worked against Cahagas. I believe he's beat you numerous times. I don't know what your issue with him with that, Richie. You know what, Cahagas is from the past, okay? I am the future of professional wrestling. Cahagas had his time already, so you need me as your fan fest. If you want to make some money, you can reach for Ayala, the heavyweight champion. Are you hearing me? Terry, oh, Terry. Wait, what's going on with this music here, Donnie? I think you yeah. speak a monster's name and he will appear. I believe that is the music for the Tokyo Monster Kahagas. Don't believe. Oh my goodness. How don't dare he interrupt one of the greatest television shows of our time, Richie's Way. Don't give me that look. It's yeah, I'm sure they're picking it up for another season. Kahagas, I think, having an issue with what Richport was saying. Kahagas, I need you to live. ACW legend Dante Brown. My name is Dante Brown. Yeah! I get it. I'm sitting with Richie's racquetball for Richie's way. For the Mr. Big Mouth way. Y'all here running your mouth about how you beat the Tokyo Monster. About how you beat the Triple Crown Champion. But you never beat him for that belt. That was a battle order. But, just a short. I'm in this custom made suit for Dante Brown. Tonight, you can act like a little soldier going off the war. So after we get out of this ring, you need to go on back to your private dressing room, spend time with that little belt, shine it up real nice, and kiss her goodbye. Because tonight will be your final night with that championship. Because I can assure you. That the Triple Crown Champion will leave a little bit heavier than when he comes in. He told you, Richie. That's an Armani. Are you believing this, Donnie? Are you believing what Dante Brown is saying right now here on Richie's Dante way? seems like a man of good authority, so making a prediction. Spend time, shine it up, and get it ready. Because we don't want it dusted when we take it home with us later. Oh, unbelievable. Dante telling Richport. That he won't be, he'll be leaving a little wide and here won't have the Proven Ground Heavyweight Championship. Well, we shall see about that. We shall certainly see about that, Donnie Harris. I got my money on the champ. Well, I don't know what the odds are for that, but, you know, as they mentioned, Cahagas, several victories over Richport, and Cahagas, you know, a Triple Crown Champion, NWA North American, NWA National, and World Champion. And you know, Vic, quite possibly, as Dante said there, could be leaving with the Proving Ground Heavyweight Championship. That matchup later on in our main event. Sorry, Jonathan, you can't continue this 
matchup, and Rick Port was able it's to a, leave with the title. It's a cutthroat world out there. It's a doggy dog world. And I know Jonathan Hudson was very close to winning back his very precious proving ground title. But you know what? This man is the hungry man. He's the hungriest man right now in proving ground. And that is awesome, Adam Bale. Well, I know he's a hungry man, but he shouldn't have tried to snatch a bone out of this dog. Jonathan Hudson, a 16-year veteran, former Proving Ground champion here at WWM Proving Ground. But, you know, he's put his quest for the title on hold, at least for tonight. He has one mission, one goal, and that is to hurt awesome Adam Bell. To be honest, I'm kind of questioning the situation here with our EMTs and such. Hudson was carried away last week. He actually put in a stretcher and was given medical observation. He should not be in the ring tonight against Awesome Adam Bell. Well, I believe it is a testament to just the strength and fighting spirit of Jonathan Hudson, plus a little motivation for the Alpha Daddy, wanting to spank the petulant child, so to speak, in Adam Bell. Awesome one is not a petulant, that is not a petulant child move you just saw right there. No, of course not. No. And I'll tell you, you don't need to well, give- Well, the bell is rung and revenge might be underway here. Now is it- Help the daddy telling him to come in close. Yep, he's right now yelling at him. It's, it's not like you have to get the alpha daddy that much ignited. He, uh, he's a self-starter to say the least. Well, that was a good strike from Adam, but it didn't do much damage. Jonathan took him down to the ground. Adam Bell on top, but no. Jonathan able tra to transition to a beautiful arm bar there. Wait a minute, Adam Bell going into a pin attempt here. Yes, show us down on the ground, I think. Oh, no, wait, yes. Maybe no. Yes, able to kick out at two, though. I said week in and week out, the best use of elbows and knees comes from the awesome one, Adam Bale. But in a match like this, he has to be so very careful against Jonathan Hudson. Because Hudson will spring those MMA moves right out of nowhere. And he has that submission, submission background. And that could be very key in a match like this there, Donnie. These two men already on the outside, just pulling away. Referee trying to get the count, to, going to the count of 10, currently at four. Oh, look at this! Beautiful! Suplexy Jonathan Hudson on the outside! Oh, that was so awesome! And you gotta wonder, Vic, how much damage is that doing to the back and spine of Jonathan Hudson? A tremendous amount, and there's been a tremendous amount of damage. Way the bell's been rung! Double count out, it would seem. Well, it seems like it hurt the, sp the spine and damaged the back of awesome Adam Bell. And wait, yes. <laughs> We're gonna need to get some help out here. We're gonna get need to get some EMT. Well, I said at the beginning of the match, you know, the Alpha Daddy has tremendous fighting spirit. He was trying to ignore that pain in his back, wanted to get in here and get some revenge on Adam Bell. Oh, yeah. Not able to do that here. Oh, yeah, getting those up extra couple of cents right there. <laughs> Well, at the end of it, it's a double count out, but it's gonna be Adam Bell walking away. That's right, the awesome one, Adam Bell, on his march to the top of Proving Ground. But you gotta think, somewhere waiting in the rings, as soon as Jonathan Hudson can get healthy again, he is gonna be on the lookout for awesome Adam Bell. Here we go, six-man tag team action. The Crazy Bastards set to go up against the set eight. But Crazy Bastards with a mystery partner. Now who would... Of course you cut me off, Michael James. We're gonna talk about
got this mystery partner of the insane bastards or the crazy bastards. But we are back. We are graced with the captain. He has returned to Proving Ground, Aaron Nova. And he has now aligned himself with the set incorporated. An incredible occurrence, if I should say so myself. Look at the power in this ring. <laughs> well, Donnie, I guess we are going to figure out who this mystery partner is. Well, I hope the set have been taking notes because one of the most unpredictable teams is about to make their way. The crazy bastard being accompanied by Uncle Dub. You cannot prepare. You cannot truly be ready to take on a team like the crazy bastard. I have seen the chaos that they do firsthand. And now, set eight are going to have to witness that firsthand as well. Uncle Duck leading the Crazy Bastards, Insane John Strange, and the loose crew Christian Mills once again making their escape from a local mental institution. Yeah, apparently they get to come out on furlough on Friday night. Might be a work release thing going on. Uh, Christian going to speak here. It supposedly saves money for the taxpayers. Oh no. Is there anyone crazy enough to tag team with these two? We're gonna try to find out. because the set owes him like a whole $25 that he's been pestering them now for the past three weeks. And unbelievable, now he's joining the crazy bastards. That's insane. I, I well, they are crazy, Vicks. Absolutely. I, Aaron Nova's gonna get to the bottom of this, I know that. But that's okay, the set incorporated. One of the most well put together teams you can ever ask for. And now it's more improved. More better with, with Captain Aaron Nova coming back from the skies. Having a huddle meeting there, getting a strategy going. You'll notice the crazy bastards, no strategy. They're gonna make it up as they go along. Yeah, that's the scary part about this team though. You can call them crazy and insane, and yet they come out with some pretty intriguing offense, some unique offense that you don't normally see from guys like this. Well, it has been very successful for the crazy bastards. Wrecked up a few key wins here at WWM Proving Ground. And it looks like Insane John Strange gonna start it off. When the Dominican powerhouse, Rafael Delgado, he's gonna test out this six-man tag team. I think he wants a piece of Mr. Steven Frick after what they did to him last week. Both men testing each other's strength there. Show from Delgado, show up now from John Strange. And now John Strange and Delgado just playing into each other. Won't see any technical finesse here. Throwing him into the rook. Misses with that lariat, bouncing it off. Doesn't miss with that kick though. Insane John Strange just going to work on Delgado. One, two, twice, knocking him down on the ground. He's now working on the arm. Trying to decide who's going to tag in. Tagging in Christian Mills. Steven Frick did not want to get tagged against Delgado. I think he's looking for someone else in this match. Oh! Drop Toho followed by an elbow drop. And now John Strange just throwing Christian Mills on top of Delgado. Like I said, Donnie, you don't know where these guys are coming from. They just they just do this thing one day and they just throw it out there. Sometimes there's no play to them whatsoever. There is never a plan. Wait, Gusto La Vega pushing ah. Christian Mills on the top rock there. Christian hurt his lower back there, obviously. But there's always a plan with the set incorporated. And Gusto La Vega let the fans know. As right now, Francisco Chiazzo, the godfather, going in there putting on a lot of damage on Christian Mills. De La Vega now tagged in, picking up Christian Mills, slamming him down under the mat. Oh, you know what they call this, Donnie? The Garlic Knots! <laughs> Now, De La Vega using the 
middle rope. Referee giving her the count of five. And now Catalina Perez is turning her nose for the business. Hey, Uncle what's up? Trying to get her away there. What's Uncle Duke trying to? Is he trying to get in the way of a woman right there? That's right, Aaron Nova. The, what a gentleman the captain is. Are you captain. kidding me? Oh, you, I, I'm not kidding. I would never kid about the captain. Or the captain Delegato and the captain. laying a strike in on the right side of the chest of Christian Mills. Oh, laying in a bitch a strike on the head. Christian Mills might be even crazier afterwards with all those strikes to the head. It's going to be a lot more hurting. As you see those strikes by Rafael Delgado, they are so devastating. I love them. Get that tag over to Gus De La Vega. And like I said, all according to the plan. Isolate, isolate, and isolate. <laughs> Throwing him in the front. That's out the other side. Oh, just eating it from Francisco. De La Vega now laying in some damage. Oh, oh the big man goes and drops that leg. Right into the throat of a loose screw Christian Mill. Showing a lot of agility this evening. The set incorporated. Of course, after last week, after getting getting jobbed out of their tag team titles, I can see why they're angry. Well, this is where the strategy of the crazy bastards is kind of a double-edged sword and it cuts them. You see, you know, set eight tagging each other out. Beautiful, beautiful thinking in their tag team maneuvers. This is what happens when you plan ahead. The crazy bastards, you know, they're unpredictable, but they don't have a plan. They don't have a strategy. And it's not working for them at this point in time. And right now, the set incorporated are going to take them apart, and then they're going to go after our champions, Tito Torres and Benji Neptune, if they even keep the belts tonight. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think so. I don't know how they got those title belts to begin with. Well, I hope they're watching this match because, you know, uh, every tag team here is trying to get a victory, and, you know, the Crazy Bastards get a victory here. They got a victory last week. They may be challenging for those ACW tag team titles. They may be. Right now, the tag over to Delgado. Of course, they might still be applying ice after the beatdown they got from, from Mad Men at work last week. And look at this, Delgado. Ruin Delgado with a Christian Neal call, and it connects. Absolutely beautiful. And now here comes... That is Francisco Chiazzo. The two big men and the little man of Zed Eek, all three of them connecting on the Christian Mills. Hooking the leg, trying to go for the pinball. No! Christian Mills still able to endure the pain, endure the agony, and kick out. And now the disrespect from De La Vega. Oh, if I'm Christian Mills, I'd be tapping out right now. Save yourself any more punishment. Oh, he gets out of the way. Nobody there, Christian Mills. Trying to close the gap, trying to tag in Stephen Frick. Dylan Vega not like that happen. Dylan Vega put to the side, and now Stephen Frick is in. Well, I'm down on Delgado, playing a strike after strike. And plenty more for good measure. Reverse hour slip from Delgado. No! Stephen Frick had another that, misses with that lariat. Transitioning to the back now. And now, just planting Delgado in the middle of the ring. Francisco going to break out the pinball tip. John Strange now and Francisco trying to keep him out of it. We got ourselves another Donnie Brook here in Proving Ground. Mr. Stephen Frick throwing a lot of combination of maneuvers against Delgado. Complete chaos here. Francisco on John Strange. De La Vega on Christian Mills. And uh, wait a minute. Delgado all by himself there. Just taking damage from John Strange. Taking damage from Stephen Frick. The dangerous position for Delgado. But now we got something going on in the corner with Aaron Nova and John Strange. We got Delgado and Frick in the other corner. Ringing for the bell. We just got pure madness here, Donnie. Referee calling for a DQ, I believe. And it's just pure pandemonium and chaos here with the crazy bastards in set eight. Now it's saying John Strange looks like a rock star. What's going on over here? Complete war, just a complete battle. And I can't believe the insane bastards hired. Oh, we knew that. I can't believe they hired Mr. Stephen Frick for this match. Well, a double disqualification. Nothing is settled between the crazy bastards and said E. And you know, Vic, I gotta think, this is not the first time, that's not the last time, rather, that we're gonna see those, those teams in the ring.
First title defense of the night, here Vic, and it is Trey Xavier getting his first shot of singles gold against the defending champion, Daniel Starlin. Yeah, this is gonna be a very, very unique and very special night. That's why we got senior referee Billy Grace in there. The Gracie W Cruiserweight Championship on the line. There is Drake Xavier, who's been having a very, very, very impressive last month. Winning the Young Lions Cup, almost defeating Jonathan Hudson. And tonight, he thinks he can bring home gold. I'm not sure that's gonna happen, though. Well, if anyone can do it, it is the Young Lions Cup winner here of 2023. Last week got a victory over Blake Banks. Been on a bit of a roll here lately. But first, he has to get through Daniel Starr. He has to get through the greatest and possibly last ACW Cruiserweight Champion ever. This guy has just been destroying people left and right. He's a well-earned, well-deserved champion. And look who he's got back with him tonight. The captain, Aaron Nova. Oh, this is amazing. Now, if my notes are correct, Aaron Nova used to manage Drake Xavier. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, the Nova Alliance did, in fact, include Drake Xavier and a partner of his. But, you know, things change in life. And when you're Aaron Nova, you hang out with winners. Drake Xavier is a winner. He's won plenty of things here. Introducing first the challenger, standing to my right, he hails from the Feywild, weighing in at 100 and weighing the pounds. He is the Young Lions Cup title winner, the Paladin of Pro Wrestling, the Metro 20. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain Xavier. Ha 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 ha! Not my And this guy here, Shabbat, is a really defending booty crown cruiserweight champion, Daniel Starling! Now there is an introduction worthy of a champion. If I do say so myself. Well, he may not be champion for long. If Drake Xavier has anything to say about it, this right here is Drake Xavier's first shot ever at singles gold here at WWN Proving Ground. Daniel Starling winning the title a few weeks back from Slyther. You had a little bit of help doing it. Well, what are you talking about? I had a little bit of you help. You were there. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, I, I'll cop the fifth on certain situations, but we all know the bottom line is Daniel Starlin is back as the ACW Cruiserweight Champion. He's got a very unique test tonight in Drake Xavier, knowing Xavier is a very high-powered, high-intense offense. Knowing that he's been going through a kind of a proving ground of his own lately with all the competitors he's been facing. And um, I'm looking for a, for a pretty even matchup here, Donnie. Drake Xavier using that quick speed to get out of that. Now he has the wrist lock on Daniel Starling. Daniel Starling, wait, no, Daniel Starling had a transition oh. out of it. That's a Put thing. Drake Xavier over. I think in this first, the first few matches, both men are filling each other out, seeing what each other has. Neither is in any particular hurt. No, they aren't testing each other out in Starlin. I'll tell you, he's an encyclopedia. He's a textbook of professional wrestling. So look how he's using that leverage right there on that forearm. Uh -oh. Xavier, though. Xavier up high, turn around, sends Daniel Starlin out of the side. Beautiful arm drag from Drake Xavier. Drake Xavier, getting... 
Just twirling uh, Daniel Starling around. Daniel Starling going to the outside there. Well, getting fanned down by his manager, Captain Nova. The challenger does bring a lot of speed to this match. He is coming in very hot and heavy. He likes to use those hurricanes, likes to use the arm drags and hip tosses a lot. Could send the champion off his game a little bit, but you know when you got the captain there. Oh! Daniel Starling had him scouted. Drake Xavier down on his knees there, back up to his feet. That's the thing. Daniel throwing it into the rope. Misses with that lariat. Oh, but Drake Xavier doesn't miss with that beautiful wheel kick. Dragging down to the middle of the ring. Oh, I think he wants to go for the best move ever. He's going to attempt it. Oh, Rose, Daniel Starling having none of that. Tripping him down and may have injured the left knee of Drake Xavier there. Almost destroyed it right there. And I'll tell you, one of Starlin's favorite maneuvers is when he's using the spinning toe holds and the figure four leg locks. And look at him done, he's going straight to it. He found his opening. Daniel Sterling gonna make sure that Andrew Knee pays dividends for him. Working in the submission. And you know, Drake Xavier, perfectly in the middle of the ring. Can't reach for any of the ropes to try to get a rope break. Gonna have to do it under his own power. Oh, laying in those elbows. That's able to get out of it. Able to get back to his feet first. Now laying him in on the back of Dan. See if Starling can withstand his barrage. There it is, withstanding that barrage, delivering that elbow. Starling very confident tonight. I, I like it when my champions are confident, you know? You also gotta wonder, you know, Aaron Nova, he used to manage Drake Xavier. You gotta wonder. How much of Drake, Drake Xavier's offense and maneuvers did Aaron Nova inform Doug Star Daniel Starling about? Oh, I'm sure he'd, he'd have a whole big book on him saying, hey, this is what this guy can do. This is where he's injured. This is where he's going to have an opening. Oh! Drake Xavier saw his opening and he took it. To say a professional wrestling no. Oh. Not only did Daniel Starling catch the leg, he caught the leg with the injured knee there, tripping Drake Xavier down to the mat. Stepping over. Oh, and now just gonna work on the left leg of Drake Xavier. There's that man can't stand, he can't fight. Drake trying to reach for those ropes. Get a break of the submission maneuver. Daniel just twisting that knee and that ankle. Human tissue was not meant to bend this way. Wait, Drake Xavier able to get the bottom rope. Daniel has to break the count. Or excuse me, has to break the submission hold. But now it is he. Oh, he's getting that foot under the knee of Drake Xavier. Goes straight right back to that left knee, the perfection he was using while he was using his own limbs on that spinning toe hold. This is why this guy is the cruiserweight champion. You know, a lot of cruiserweight champions, they can fly out there, and I am impressed with that. This guy, whoever, can wrestle you on the ground and beat you the way he needs to beat you. Up and over Drake Xavier went, following it up with a beautiful European uppercut, and the defending champion just sitting down there in the corner. If Drake has a moment, it's now. No! Xavier wanted to go for that big flying move in the corner, his his vintage move there. Unfortunately, that left knee is so beat up right now, and Starling knows it. And Starling now taking him to school, you could say. Has oh. the submission locked in good and tight. He has got that completely cinched in, bone on bone, joint on joint. And right. Drake Xavier has to ignore the pain. He has to grit his teeth. He needs to scoot to that, scoot to a bottom rope, top rope, middle rope, do whatever he can. Wait a minute, he turned over Daniel. A rare mistake by the champion, and Xavier right now able to have that reversal in. Trying to reach for Captain Nova there. Wait, Daniel able to reverse the reversal. I know, but it's taking some damage out of the champion. You can tell right now, both guys jostling, jostling for position. That's why Drake Xavier was trying to get out of it, but no. Starling still has control, but Xavier now has a lot more movement with his upper body, and he's using it to get to the ropes. And finally, as, as you said, finally able to get those ropes. And Daniel Starling just giving a little extra stretching in there on that left knee. You gotta wonder if Drake Xavier's even gonna be able to stand at this point. No, I don't think so. I think he's done. He's a one-legged man. And that's Daniel Starlin, the man who's been taking care of people with figure four leg locks and pile drivers and all kinds of maneuvers. That's your champion right there. Well, no one is doubting the abilities and the pedigree of Daniel Starling. 
And now Drake Xavier trying to get back to his feet, have to use those ropes to do that. Oh, he's oh had him scouted. Oh, and the defending champion's head hits that middle turnbuckle. I noticed he used his right knee for the extra leverage on that to try to keep pressure off the left knee. That's smart by the challenger, Xavier. And using those uppercuts to down Daniel Starlin, Donnie. Tom picking up the defending champion. And up and over he went. He has perfected that salto suplex. Trying to go for the cover, though, with that left knee in that position. That was all that was needed for Drake Xavier to win his first title here at WWE Proving Ground. But no, the defending champion, Daniel Starling, able to kick out. He can't argue with the ref, though. He's got to keep the momentum coming. He wants to get that title. He's got to keep the champion at a disadvantage. And now he's going to set him up for that powerbomb, perhaps. Got him off on his shoulder. Wait. No, Starling reverses him. Drake Xavier able to get out of it. Boot to the head there, sends the defending champion crashing back down into the corner. But you see, every time Drake Xavier does a maneuver, it just does more damage to that left knee. Clutching it in pain there, wasn't able to capitalize. When he used that right knee, he actually fell on that left knee. That was the consequence of using that move, and right now it is paying dividends for you to take with a champion who doesn't look very much look like he has dividends. Oh, the ends of Gurry by Xavier. Daniel Starling caught one foot, then he caught the other foot right to the head. Got ourselves some making of a classic, Donnie. Definitely so, Vic, definitely so. Drake Xavier pointing up high. Think he, thinks he wants to finish it by going to the high rent district. I'm not sure if that's a wise maneuver. Wait a minute, Daniel, Daniel talking with him. Wait a minute! Oh! Eric Nova, grab the top rope. There, there and was, Drake Xavier came crashing down. I noticed there was something slippery on that top rope. Aaron Nova wanted to get rid of the slippery. Are you kidding me? Unfortunately, has hurt the momentum of Drake Xavier, apparently. Because look at Starling go. Starling locking in the figure four leg lock. Drake Xavier trying to ignore the pain. Trying to get his teeth. Referee checking. Is he good? No. Drake Xavier still trying to fight through it. Trying to reach for a rope break. Trying to do something. He's fighting with every inch of his life out there, but Starling still able to keep that figure four. Can he withstand these last couple of inches? He's well, trying to scoot to the ropes, but the defending champion having none of that, and just reaching on the leg of the natural 20. Brought him right back in the middle of the ring, and now it's a, it's a leverage battle. It's a tug of war with legs. Daniel Starling certainly has more leverage here. Referee checking. Well, he did well, check. Drake Xavier didn't tap out, but he fainted. So Daniel Starling got the pinfall and is still your champion. But Vic, even you have to admit, you have got to be impressed there with the natural pony, Drake Xavier. The submission hole was locked in good and tight. But that young man right there, despite all the brutal damage that had been done to the left leg, he did not quit. He did Submit. And the matchmakers here at the Proving Ground were no doubt watching, and I can imagine pretty soon Drake Xavier may get a rematch down the line. Contendership to begin with. You know, I have been ragging on these 
guys for a long time ripping on them. But what they did last week was one of the proudest moments I've ever seen in Proving Ground history. It was a blatant show of disrespect to the new champions. You know, Benji Nuttu, Tito Torres, fought through the ranks, won those tag titles. And their moment to just take it all in and celebrate was robbed from them by the Mad Men at work. Now I'm so happy it was, because I'll tell you, Mad Men at work, they've been fighting for their shot at the tag team title. And you know what I think? Because they're buddies with Benji and Tito, ben Benji and Tito used them just to pass them by. You know that. You know how it is in the wrestling business. Well, I think it was sour grapes or jealousy that motivated the Mad Men at work last week to do what they did. But here now, they, were, they will be able to expunge any envy or jealousy they have, provided they can get by the new tag team champions, Benji Neptune and Tito Perez. I don't care what Benji Neptune ever says, I am not getting on Benji time. I have my own time, Donnie. It's Champions. They want to get inside their heads and they need to if they want these belts. In fact, then you gotta let us know who's gonna tag first. Playing a little bit of mind games with uh, Benji and Tito. Benji and Tito ready to get this thing on the way. Scyther and Chungus, not so much. Trying to, I guess, trying to figure out, as you said, you know, who's gonna start it off. They're having a very, very intense strategic meeting here, Mad Men at Work. That's one way you could put it. Mad Men at Work about to get to work here. Looks like Chungus is going to start it off. Chungus against T. Hey, what is the crowd? What are those fans chanting out there? Are they chanting, chanting fungus? I believe so, showing no respect to the challengers. I mean, the challengers showed no respect to the chant. Oh my god, he's about to strip. Oh, sexy Chungus. Uh, no comment. No comment. The man is more than just a simple-minded mi microbotic micronoid or whatever that these fans are cheating out here. You made that word up. It's a big slohanism. Well, Chung is not liking the chance of fungus. What he needs to do is quit worrying about the chance and concentrate on his opponent there, Tito. Don't you start cheering him on, Donnie. Well, I, I haven't known Tito or Benji very long, but I gotta admit they've grown on me. You know, I can admit that uh, Mad Men at Work, very accomplished competitors, but well, we're going to find out here who's going to leave with those that gold. Call an elbow tie up. Oh, and the bigger yeah. man just sending Tito crashing to the map. See, that's what working at the quarry gets you. And yes, the quarry does have a lot of fungus there, and sometimes it's a staple diet of certain workers. But that gets does not give the Port Richie crowd any right to be chained fungus at Chungus. Tito doesn't seem to be discouraged there any way, shape, or form. Go, go. Wait a minute. Going behind the bigger man. But what can you do against a man that weighs that much? You know, Chung is just throwing Tito around. You know, I know Tito's been wanting to work on his ground game, his technical wrestling skills, but I don't think that's such a good idea against Chungus. Well, all that's well and good, but you got to get Chungus on the ground to be able to apply that. And Chungus is a hard man to knock off his feet. Yes, Tito's going to have to find some way here. Well, Tito certainly has the speed. He has the striking power to do it. Speaking of strike, just laying that knee into the breadbasket of Tito. Oh, yeah. Put him off. No. Tito back on his feet. Beautiful drop kick from the defending champion. Chungus on his knees for the first time there. Throwing all his body weight into Chungus. And now, Benji tagged in. And the defending champions, the Wild Side Experience, just laying all that they can in on Chungus. Well, 
Outside experience. I can't stand that name. Oh, oh, no. Tito. They got Chung at the... Benji throwing him into a drop kick. Going for a pinball attempt here. No. You see Slyther, that? Slyther trying to go out there to help his partner, but tripped on that rope. And now the head of Chungus eats into that top turn bucket. Benji now with the vicious slap to the chest. Tagging back in Tito. All right, the ref now keeping that count on five because, you know, these guys tend to lose count sometimes. But yeah, Torres right now does have Chungus where he wants him. Oh, Chungus reversing that Irish whip. Grabbing the body of Tito and crashing him into the other corner. And now tagging in Scyther. And now things are about to get really chaotic because Scyther's in there now and he's going to tear up Tito to to Torres. This guy has been to literal hell and back. That's why I think it's going to be the difference tonight in Mad Men at work getting their tag team titles back. Trying to go for a suplex, but Tito's stopping it not once, not twice, but three times. Lakes and strikes in there on the ribcage of Scyther. Fisherman suplex from Tito! No! Scyther able to kick out at the last second, clutching on that back. The damage has been done. That was well placed, I gotta admit. Tito Torres bringing them great suplexes. Yeah, I don't think that was considered a tag. Scyther reverses the Irish whip now. Missing with that lariat. Up and over, Tito goes. Into another pin attempt. Chungus having none of that. And just the weight of Chungus' knee just crashing onto the spine of Tito. No, kick out in two. So that was considered a blind tag. Very smart by Madman at work. And I'll tell you, you have to be careful with somebody like Tito Torres who's still dangerous in that corner. Speaking of... Will you... Will they stay? Doing that for God's sake. Chungus uh, seems to be no longer bothered by it. Concentrating on Tito instead. Sider tag back in now. Of course not. He's up. And now, both mad men at work going to work on Tito Torres. Tearing off the bandana and using it to choke the defending champion with. It's, that is despicable. It's getting real now when the bandanas are getting choked around the next. This match is getting big time. And Mad Men at Royal right now have the Tito Torres exactly where he wants, where they want him to be. And I think they're mere seconds away from that championship. It's just chop from Sider. Sent Tito staggering in the corner. Chunk is now the legal man once again. Oh! Right into the throat. Nice thrust chop. I know how Tito's breathing at this point. I don't even know why he's still on his feet. It's just pure instinct at this point. Chungus just tearing apart Tito Torres. Snapmare there, and now going to work into submission. Chungus using those big thighs to just try to squeeze the life out of Tito. Busy trying to go and help his partner, but no. And there you see the mad men at work doing illegal work. Referee's back was turned, unfortunately. It was a little off the clock. It was a little under the table, but I wouldn't call it illegal. The ref didn't put a count on it. But I'll tell you right now, Mad Men at work is absolutely tearing apart Tito Torres. And these fans are not making it any better for Torres. <laughs> well, with, uh, with Chungus's legs wrapped around Tito, he might as well have a, a cast iron chain and an anchor wrapped around him. And now, Father once again coming to the aid of his partner. Benji about had enough of that. He has a problem with the champions right now. They've been only tagging for about a month. They've had a lot of high-profile matches, but they are still working out the kinks of their team. And this is costing them what Benji was doing with that referee. Referee checking on Tito. Tito slamming his foot in the mat. Wants to get the adrenaline going. Wants to get the endorphins fired up. Trying to get out of this submission hole. Wait a minute, going into a pin attempt? No! Oh! Scyther coming crashing down on the chest of Tito. Scyther now, hooking the leg. Tito able to kick out. Tito's gonna have Chungus marks on the side of his ribs for the next month and a half. And now fighting him! What the? You sure that wasn't a that wasn't like a modified face lock or something? I'm pretty sure what I saw. Good God. How low can Scyther stoop? I know they were jealous of the champions, but come on! Jealous? They just they wanted their shot, they wanted their time in the sun, and Benji Neptune and Tito Torres took it away from them, and now they just take it back what's rightfully theirs. And doing a fit. Referee warner, warning Scyther there. Doing a Mad fit. Men at work don't want to DQ, want to win those titles. 
And Tito has just been absorbing all this punishment. I don't even know how he's still standing. I'm not sure either. Tito's been in there for an awfully long time. Wants to get, wants to, get to his partner, Benji, but he has to get past that wall of humanity. Chungus, 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 oh, vicious suplex from Chungus. And here you are, ladies and gentlemen, your new ACW. Hey, wait a minute. Spoke a little too soon there, Vic. Now Chungus choke, trying to choke the line that was out a, of Tito Torres. That was a three count. He had him down for the three. How much more is Tito Torres really going to be able to take? And right now, it's taking those ropes, even getting back up to his knees. Benji just in the corner there, can't come to the end of his partner. And all the weight of Chungus just coming down onto the body of Tito Torres. The only thing holding up is that second rope. Going to do it again for good measure. I have never seen Mad Men at work this assertive, this focused, this destructive. I, I love this new attitude from Mad Men at work. Well, this attitude may just have them leave with it. Nobody home that time! And Chuck is just crashing all of that weight down onto the mat. If Tito had a moment, if he had an opportunity, this is it. This is now. He needs to get back to his feet and tag in Benji. He's got been on the ground. Referee starting to count. He's got nothing left. He's trying to flop in there, but it's not happening. Chungus just needs to make that tag, and this match will be over. Tito, how is he still crawling? Chungus much closer to his partner than Tito is, but Tito on his knees there, crawling over, and he got no! it! Benji and now in with Slyther. Beautiful Lariat from the defending chair. Another Lariat from Benji. Benji just throwing up all of his weight into that maneuver. Slyther back up to his feet, misses. I've never heard Vicious screaming. Backdrop from Benji Neptune. I've never heard screams like that before. What is Benji Neptune doing to poor Scyther? That's insane. Scyther going to the outside now. That's all right. Fungus. I mean, Chungus has him right where he wants. Oh! I'd say that Benji has Fungus right where he wants him. Going to take both members of the Wild Side Experience, but they're going to try to take down Chungus right here and now. Scyther coming. Oh, wait a minute! with the red fist spinning in on a Tito. That's a disqualification. Really? You, you can't blow mist in pro wrestling? No, you cannot blow mist in the eyes of your opponent in professional wrestling. Well, I, you know that. You downloaded the rule book. I, I, I saw that somewhere in the rule book as a subjective, subjective occurrence or a guideline. Someone should have told Mad Men at work about this. Well, nonetheless, here's what they're going to do to Tito Torres. Oh, my goodness. Sweet belly flopping Buddha, all of Chungus' weight just coming down on a Tito. The Mad Men at work get the DQ, won't be leaving with the titles, but they look pretty pleased with themselves nonetheless. I think Tito Torres and Benji Neptune are going to be champions in name only. See what you got to think. The matchmakers here at Proving Ground have been watching this. The matchmakers were probably watching this and we may see a rematch down the line. Wildside Experience successful nonetheless in their very first tag team title defense, but I don't think this is how they wanted the first notch in their belts to go here, Vic. You might be right, but pretty soon it might be Mad Men at work taking them belts away. Championship time here, Vic, at WWN Proving Ground. Rich Port Ayala defending his title against the Tokyo Monster Kahagan. How do you prepare for a man like Kahagan? Well, as soon as Michael James stops interrupting me. This 
could Seven take a half hour. somebody like the Hagen. This guy is vicious, he's brutal, he's secretly agile because he doesn't always like to show that. He has tremendous amounts of experience, both here and abroad, and he's got a very successful, very rich, very savvy manager in Dante Brown there. So yeah, the champion does have a lot against him tonight, but... He is the champion. Bridgeport was able to hold on to the title last week in that two out of three falls match. You see, Donnie, he's gonna he's gonna interrupt you too. The champion here has got all the natural gifts. He's got the speed, the agility, the viciousness, the intelligence, the suave, the, the what's the je ne sais quoi, you might say. And he's also a tremendous multimedia star, which Cahagas is not, as you saw earlier tonight. All I saw was for the first time, you know, he might have been wearing sunglasses, but I saw a bit of fear, I believe, in the defending champion's eyes. You know, they mentioned Cahagas has several victories over Richport. You gotta wonder if Richport has a chip on his shoulder here. Is Cahagas in the mind of the defending champion? Well, we're, we'll find out about that. I think Richport Ayala coming down here solo, though. He wants to prep himself for a one-on-one -on -one match. He does not want a lot of outside interference because that's the thing about Rich Portaella. He doesn't have a lot of outside in his matches. Your nose is growing there. You may remember last week when Adam Bell inserted himself in the heavyweight championship matchup. Nothing to do with Jonathan that. Jonathan Hudson a chance to reclaim the title. Oh, now that's subjective. He had nothing to do with that. That was an issue between Jonathan Hudson and Adam Bell. I mean, Rich Portaella can't be in the middle of every single thing that happens here on Proving Ground. Well, right now he's right in the middle of a title defense here. Cahagas just cautiously, wait, uh, Richport trying to escape from Cahagas there. That act almost, if you'll pardon me saying it, somewhat cowardly. It is not cowardly. He is just pushing him off. He knows very much how dangerous Cahagas is, but especially when he's on the ground. He's going to look for a single leg takedown, double leg takedowns. He's going to look for a way to get the champ to the ground. And the champ right now is playing a nice cat and mouse game with him. Lock up now. Bridgeport Ayala got somewhat of a hide advantage here. Yep, and he's pushing the, ch pushing the challenger into that corner there. Referee giving him to the count of five. Cahagas actually using the top bottom turnbuckle to try to push himself up, but Bridgeport trying to keep him in that corner for the moment, anyways. Only has five seconds at best. Testing him out, testing him out. Cahagas going in charging, has the champion up on the ropes. Say it's not usual to see Cahagas come out sort of an early in a match like this, but he knows how important this match is. I mean, this guy collects titles. Like the, some of these nerds collect comic books and wrestling figures. And you've seen it. Yeah, I have a few in my house. But right now, Cahagas just, as you said, trying to collect the Proving Ground Championship. Shove now from the defending champion. Shove back from the challenger. A little bit more strength in that shove. Beautiful arm drag from Cahagas. Another arm drag from Cahagas. See, it's that decision. Misses. Oh, there, Donnie, you're right. Cahagas didn't miss with that, and now Richport going to the outside. I was about to say, it's that deceptive speed of Cahagas that is kind of causing the danger here against Richport Ayala. You know, Richport doesn't have Catalina Perez, doesn't have anyone in his corner here all by himself. I know, he's putting himself on, on quite a string here without having the set incorporated, providing emotional support and giving him that little extra inch, that little extra ounce of information that you need in a match like this. Well, Richport just using the 10 count there to take a moment, catch his breath, come up with a strategy. 
I, 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 you would think, but how do you strategize for a man like Cahagas? Bridgeport well, taking his time, slow and steady, getting back into the ring. Back well, in now, and we can continue. Well, he's doing it right now. He notices he's, that Cahagas is using a lot of arm drags in there. He's trying, going to try to speed up the match a little bit, which is not always Cahagas' style. So Richport is like, okay, Cahagas I'm going for another way. Cahagas winning the long time. Ow! Oh, move for the defending champion. Strike on the back. Another strike on the back. Third time, fourth time, fifth time for good measure. Heads to the count of five once again. There we go, look for that weakness on Cahagas, which is very hard to do, but that's why he's the champion out there, that freaking Rican in control of the Tokyo Monster. Picking the Tokyo Monster by his head. Using that top rope there now. You know, Richport better be careful, he's gonna get himself disqualified. And I don't think he wants that. You know, he wants to get a pinfall, he wants to get a victory over Cahagas. Cahagas responding with that vicious chop to the chest. Kick from the champion. Oh, another hit from Cahagas. Champion trying to plant him down on the ground. Just raining down those blows from Cahagas. Oh, absolutely. You're right, Donnie. This isn't just more than just a title defense. This is a big source of pride. You could tell during earlier on in Richie's way when Cahagas came down how big the eyes got wide on Richport Ayala. He needs this win on his mantle. Richport quite frankly laying the boots to Cahagas. Cahagas absorbing all that damage. Taking a moment now, up to one knee, up to both knees. Richport is turning his back on his opponent. Don't think that's a good idea. Oh, case in point right there. Normally I'd say the champ would have it under control, but yeah, when you're against Cahagas, you have to have eyes in the back of your head. Well, Cahagas' eyes seeing that, getting intimate with that top turnbuckle. Oh, a slap to Cahagas. And there you go, he's yelling at Cahagas, I'm the man now, that's what this is about. This is about going in and taking that victory. I am the Rich, Rich Port sat on Richie's way that Cahagas' time had done pass. It is his time now. And right now, I'd say those words are ringing true. Defending champion standing at the moment. Well, normally a moment to pose. I normally agree with the champion on a lot of things, but there's been a lot of men throughout the course of history of wrestling when it comes to Cahagas' say His time is done, and they have been proven wrong. Cahagas over two decades in the business, now laying those elbows into Richport. Richport laying a knee, knee now into Cahagas, flying it up with some strikes of his own. Those strikes are so vicious. He is coming in full force tonight. That top rope probably being the only thing holding up the Tokyo Monster. Irish whipping him up on the second rope. Beautiful crossbody from Cahagas into a pin attempt. No, almost had a new champion there, Ben. Absolutely, Cahagas with that nice cross body. But it's that yellow the champion going back to the kicks and the strikes, to those stomps. Getting that crowd all riled up. And he seems to feed on that. I think this is a mistake from the champion. He needs to concentrate on his opponent and quit worrying about the crowd. I mean, at no point does Richport ever give the impression that he cares what the crowd thinks of again, then. Sometimes I think there might be a deeper game at play. But right now, he, he's more interested in taking the air out of Cahagas. Trying to choke him out, trying to take him down. You see, now you see it. Well, Dante now is mentioning that could be a choke. I think it's a by the chin there, Donnie. Chin lock, head lock, choke, whatever you want to call it. It is very effective right now. Richport is trying to squeeze the breath out of Cahagas. Cahagas has that hand up, but there's no rope or anything to reach for for leverage. That's right. Trying to get back to his feet here. Trying to scoot or something. Richport shaking his head. No. Cahagas on one knee. Up back to his feet. See, he's got a Lays of strikes into the bread basket of the defending champion. Had Several him. now. Cahagas making some distance there. Richport closing it right there. And Cahagas once again just resting on that bottom turnbuckle there. Oh, you dismiss it right there. He's just yelling, letting everyone know he is the proven ground champion. He is the man. And he's about to take out Cahagas. No! Cahagas had him scouted. Richport eating nothing but boot and leather there. Oh no, his head planting firmly into that turnbuckle. Referee's gonna have to check on the champion right now. He must be dizzy. Probably seeing stars. Dante seemed to be checking on the condition of that turnbuckle. It seems uh, good in good order. Cahagas staggering, but he is back to his feet. Both guys are hurting, but when Cahagas is on his two feet, he is so dangerous, Donnie. Case in point right there. Cahagas has the champion's arm underneath that top rope. 
Dante cheering him on. Oh. Laying in all the slaps of the strikes under the chest of the defending champion. Slapping him down into the ground. Slapping him around like he brought home a deal in his report card. My God, you could have those chops in slow motion and they'd still be too fast. That's insane. Oh, now it's Cahagas got him. He's getting him set up there, Donnie. I don't know what he's got him set up for. Cahagas. Uh. You know, running his hand across the throat and wanting to say it's over. Richport might have issue with that, laying those elbows in. Oh, I thought he had the champ right where he wanted him. Richport Ayala out of instinct now throwing those shots. Richport doing everything he can to retain his title. Oh, it's another vicious boot to the head. Missing with that. Richport picking up the challenge. in the way of that. Richport Ayala had Cahagas. Bitch is right line from Cahagas. The Tokyo Monster with the pin, but there's no one there to count it. There's no referee there. Wait a minute, who, who, what's this guy doing in here? Oh, hey, wait a minute, it's a count. We have a new champion. So the worst, the worst history in the guest. Well, our referee was out, but we had another no. referee on standby. No, 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 you can't tell me. No way, you can't tell me. The worst coach, the worst guest in the history of television goes out there and makes a three count in a match like this. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, guy. This is insane. To the bottom of the count was perfectly legal. Cahagas is the new champion of WWE Improving Grounds. And the crazy bastards and Stephen Frank coming to his aid. Stuffing set incorporated. No way. That guy's not a licensed official. He can't even grow hair. What's Uncle Duck doing in there? Uncle Duck backing, backing up his charges. The loose new Christian Mills and insane John Strange. Steve Frick. I'm not sure what the connection is between them and the Tokyo Monster. Wait a minute, our commissioner coming out here uh, asking for a mic. Cahagas holding up the belt. Defiling the belt. That should be Rich Port Ayala's championship. I can't believe this. Some guy just comes out of the crowd, counts to three, he gets to be a guest host. Or I'm, I'm flustered, Donnie. I am absolutely flustered. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, your new WWE Premier Heavy Revival, Cahagas! Well, it was all legal. And Cahagas, the new champion of WWE Proving Ground. But now he lost to the Tokyo Monster Cahagas, who reigns supreme. WWE Improving Ground is now his stomping ground. Thank you all for watching here. Be sure to check us out on all our social medias. For everyone here at the WWE Training Center, I'm your ringside pitchman, Donnie Harris Jr. He's big, strong, slow hand. We'll see you next time.